Happy Monday everyone, this is Martha with Nature Niche and this week I want to show you a really neat native uh, perennial forb or wildflower, the pink lady slipper, uh, Cyperpedium a. coli. So a. coli means stemless, so another um, common name for this wildflower is stemless lady slipper or moccasin flower. Uh, because of the shape of the pouch on the flower. And uh, it's called stemless because the leaves um, do not extend up along the stem of the plant. You just have the two basil leaves and then a single um, flower stalk with one flower at the end. Pink lady slipper is one of our most common lady slippers in the state of Michigan. And its habitat includes uh, acidic soils, and it can be found um, in dry, sandy forests under red and jack pine, mixed oak and pine forest, as well as under aspen and birch. It can also be found in moist to wet sites like hummocks and sphagnum bogs under cedar, tamarack, and spruce and coniferous swamps and under pine and hemlock on um, rocky, mossy slopes. It's a large, showy wildflower in the orchid family, and it grows to six, um, up to 15 inches tall, and it blooms in Michigan um, mid to late May into June. It has uh, two basil leaves with parallel veins and those leaves are hairy. The stem is hairy and leafless and the leaves have a central vein as well as parallel lateral veins uh, that are deeply pleated or creased. The flowers are white to pinkish in color even into a deep rose like here. Um, they can be pink with darker uh, red to violet colored veins. Very rarely are they all white. The pouch or lip is about two inches long and is deeply cleft down the center with a pair of tapering, narrow, often twisted petals that are yellow green to um, purple in color also covered in fine hairs. Pink lady slipper is bee pollinated, especially by queen bumblebees early in the growing season that are attracted by the showy and fragrant flower. That's deceptive though, as neither nectar nor accessible pollen are available. So the bees enter through the slit in the lip and um, hairs direct them to the only escape route, which is uh, the exit beneath each of the pollen masses. So they deposit pollen uh, from previously visited flowers as they pass under the stigma and they pick up fresh pollen um, coming out of that exit area. The fruit of Pink Lady Slipper is a capsule that ripens from green to a tan brown color. And as it dries, it splits open to release thousands of tiny powdery seeds. The seeds do not contain food of their own. They, most seeds have a food supply, um, but orchid seeds often do not. And they require threads of soil fungus to break them open and provide nutrients and food. And once uh, the plant matures, the um, fungus will extract nutrients from the orchid roots. So this is a typical symbiotic relationship between orchids and uh, soil fungi. And it's why it's important not to dig up and try to transplant uh, this and many other orchid species it's why they're not propagated for sale. It's very tricky to replicate um, that symbiotic relationship during cultivation. 
So I highly recommend you get out and you enjoy them um, in the wild and protect the soil and the, the vegetation in the forest where they occur naturally. Uh, don't buy them. If you see them for sale, they've likely been dug up um, and they're not going to transplant successfully. So certainly um, advocate for their conservation and um, help protect the forest and control invasive species and keep the acidic forest where this beautiful orchid occurs in uh, a healthy condition. Pink lady slippers take a long time to mature from seed uh, to flowering plants and individual plants can live more than 20 years. So get out, visit your nearest oak pine um, woodland with sandy soils and I hope you get to see this lovely spring orchid. Take care.